Hello, in this video I'm going to show you how to use the NVivo coding function and the um, bibliography that you've gathered from communication and mass media com uh, complete to write the first section of your first assignment. So what I'm going to be doing, what I'd like you to have open is the Prezi that, uh, that I've sent you on assignment one writing guide. And I'd also like you to have the bibliography and the NVivo um, project that you developed last week. I'd like you to have that open as well. And what I'm going to do is show you how a couple of functions in NVivo can actually help you go about writing the first section of your essay. So um, if we go to what you're being asked to do in your essay, So these are the essays um, and overall what I'm suggesting is that you can break down these essays into three component parts and despite the fact that they have different content they can be written according to the same structure. So what I've done in this, uh, in this rubric and writing guide is I've given you the sections um, of the essay and some ideas about roughly how long those essay that these sections should be and the criteria according to which they're going to be marked. Also importantly these will be the criteria according to which you will receive your feedback. So um, this will be the sort of ideas that you will be able to work on for the final exam as well. The first section of the question is the type of thing that you would find in any essay question and this is that whenever you're starting to answer uh, an essay question um, the first thing you do is you address that question, you tell the reader, you grab the reader by the, by the throat, you get their attention by telling them in a very compelling way exactly what you're going to do. Then I'll just roughly go through um, what you can do that the other sections firstly the first section the second or rather the after you've introduced your topic you need to explain in general terms how the topic is related to the question of media power and this is the section that I really want to focus in on today next week we're going to be looking at using the NVivo function in this sim in a similar function to answer this essay because after you've kind of explained the general field of your essay you're going to be looking at more specific concepts and case studies that you want to talk about and then justifying your topic you're talking about a particular case study why are you talking about it why is it conceptually and historically relevant so we're going to be going over all of those things in class but what I wanted to do in this essay in particular in this lecture in particular is talk about how you can begin to define your topic um, using the NVivo bibliographies that you've gathered. And recall that when you're using the NVivo bibliographies, you're really doing this to generate ideas about how you can develop your interest into a workable research project. So the first thing that I want to say is that you really can't do very much in terms of identifying a workable topic until you've read academic literature. So a lot of people right now are coming up with a topic and saying is the topic okay? Um, the answer to that really depends on what you've read about it and how you understand the way that your topic connects to established body of, of academic literature. And a way to do that is through coding NVivo bibliographies and that's what I'm going to show you how to do right now. So say for example, let's go back to communication and mass media complete. And I'm just going to show you 
again um, because I think it's it's worth doing this exercise more than once just to really get home what 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 we're able to do. So suppose, for example, I was interested in doing something on the relationship between media and um, eating disorders. So what kind of thought process have I gone through here? Well, we kind of know that, generally speaking, that the topic of how the representation of women and women's bodies has an effect on the lives that women lead has been a long running topic of concern. But we also know from our research on media effects that we can approach that issue of the relationship between how women are shown in the media and how they live as women in society in a number of different directions. We can look, for example, at the particular impact of particular kinds of content on particular behaviours. And that's important, but we also know that that's not everything there is to know about media influence. And we also know that it misses out a range of more subtle influences that media have on people. And those influences can be thought of in more general political terms. So instead of asking how does exposure to, say, an advertisement that represents a woman's body in a particular way affects how you eat and drink, for example, you might instead look at how um, particular, you know, the cumulative exposure to messages about women and body type kind of have more of a political effect. They play a longer term, more subtle, but arguably more important role in socialising us into thinking about what's appropriate and what's not appropriate for women to do with their bodies. So one of the very um, interesting and powerful ways of getting into this particular issue, this general issue of how media in general affect how women live in their bodies in general is through the topic of eating disorders. So say I was just thinking in a fairly loose way, well, I want to get into this topic of women in media by looking at eating as disorders because it's something that you see a lot about in the media. The way that media um, place pressures on women to look certain ways. So I'm simply going to type in um, a, a search term which is women, I'll put women up here and then eating disorders. And I limited it to full text. Over on the left hand here I, I clicked full text because I only wanted um, to get sources that I could read the whole thing. And then of course I connected it also to scholarly peer reviewed journals. And what I got was this collection of 28 essays. And then as you know, um, what I've done is I've saved that. Um, what I've, I've actually gone through is the first thing I've done is I've gone through and I've gone, well, the first thing that I'm doing is that I want to focus very specifically on the relationship between media and attitudes towards women's bodies. So I've gone through and I've clicked on sources which are about media and eating disorders. So um, I've kind of missed out the course that the the, um, the sources that are about literature, for example, um, and I've missed out the sources which are about interpersonal communication. So I've gone through and I've done a very, very quick search um, and I've kind of knocked out the things that aren't specifically about, um, about media communication. And then I've left those in the folder up here. I've saved all of those and they're up here in the folder. Sorry, I've been signed out for a while. Okay, but anyway, the folder was definitely there because um, then the next thing I've done is I've uh, hit save, I've hit select all. Um, I, what I've done is I've done, um, paste special here and put it in as, uh, uh, and pasted it in as uh, text only. Um, 
and then I've got this uh, this nice kind of neat kind of file and then what I've done is I've gone into Envivo and as you can see I've imported it as that document there and here it is so now we've seen all of that before but what I want to show you now is how we can actually start to use codes to begin to think about how we can go about exploring this uh, question of how eating or how eating disorders relate to the general question of how media affects society. So let me show how to do this. So what we're doing in this section is we're going through and we're looking for patterns. Remember, we're looking for two sorts of things. Firstly, um, the concept. Why does it matter? Why does the question of how media engage with body disorders relate to the broader issue of how media affects society? So we're looking for why does that happen? And then we're also looking for questions of how does this happen? Okay. So um, we, what we can do is we can begin to look through this to begin to think about how, how those components might happen. So for example, we've got record one here. And suppose we highlight the whole thing. What we see in here is that this, once we've read through it, is that this represents a number of different approaches to the topic of women and eating disorders and how that relates to media power. And we can begin to note that down through, firstly, through the coding function. So what I've done is I've highlighted the description of this particular article. I've right clicked it on my Mac. I've gone down to code selection and I've hit new node. Now, what are some of the things that I could say about this? Well, I suppose one of the things would be advertising. Because remember, what I'm trying to do is trying to look for a pattern, look for something which is a sustainable research uh, approach. So the first thing I might want to do is collect all of the articles that I can find that are about advertising. And I go done. But I'm not quite finished with that. And then um, because there are more things that are going on here. Okay. So the other thing is that one of the things we notice is that this is from a particular part of the world. So again, I'd highlight it again. And I put India. Because it may well be that there are a range of uh, articles that are about India. So I've done that. Now, the third thing I'd do is I might find um, that there's a particular approach here, which when we're talking about why does it matter, why does the media representation of, uh, of, of, of body images and eating disorders matter? Here, we've got a claim about an effect. So we, we see in here that there's a very specific kind of effect that's specified. It was found that women who are overestimating their pre present body size and idealize a thinner image. Now, I would locate this in a particular kind of effect.
which I guess is the normalization of skinniness. Okay, so it might be that as I go through all of these things, I'm finding, lot, I mean, the, the, I might find a lot of things which are talking about how media normalize the idea that, um, that women should be skinnier than most women actually are. So then I'm done. Then we go to the nodes, and what we would see is when we've done all of this, when I click on the nodes, it takes me back to exactly the sources that are worth looking at. Okay, and that's there forever. Now, the other thing I might want to do is add an annotation. I can begin writing down my ideas as I write, as I read, even at this stage. So what I might do is, if we go back to the writing guide, explain in general how the topic is related to media power. So what does the topic of eating disorders say in general about media power? What I can do here is I can add an annotation. This locates the topic of eating disorders to the role that media play in normalizing, oops, trying to spell that right, normalizing ideas about reality. Where's one of the ideas we've heard about that? E.G. George Gerbner and Cultivation. So you've got a note about normalization. Close that off. You see it's there. And what this means is that when you come to this section of your essay, then you're able to come back and check your notes. And that's one of the ideas you can put in here. Explain in general how the topic is related to media power. Well, one of the things about, uh, one of the reasons why research on the way media represent women's bodies and eating disorders is interesting is because it speaks to the normalization power of the media. The idea that media affect our sense of reality by showing us the same ideas again and again and again. And what we see from India, for example, is that when Indian women are shown thin bodies over and over and over again, they seem to, some research suggests that they accept that as normal. So that's one of the things you can do. Now, I suppose kind of um, one of the other things we can do is wanted to scroll down here to look at another example because at this stage what we're doing is we're looking for different kinds of uh, evidence about how things work and this is quite lengthy because we've got a whole article that's in there This is kind of interesting. I like this one. So, because this is actually an article about um, how women are represented as animals um, in relation to overeating. So, what we have here are a different set of ideas. And again, we could um, 
make a set of annotations, add a new node. Firstly, the thing that's interesting about this is it's looking very specifically at the role of women's magazines. And that might be something that we want to look at because there are uh, there's a lot of research uh, about representations of women in magazines that goes all the way back to the 1950s. I think also you're talking about, I would be tempted to put in an idea about shaming, which is a little bit different from normalization. So again, we've got the possibility that, and you can begin to see how if you begin to go into your node matrices, you're beginning to see a range of ideas emerging. The ideas that we can look at specific kinds of genres we can look at specific places, we can look at different processes through which people become, uh, through which uh, people come to think about their bodies. We can talk about processes of normalization. We can talk about processes of shaming. But hopefully what you can see is that there's a narrative that's beginning to come together that can fill out this section of the essay fairly easily. So let's continue on because there was another uh, link that I want to talk about. Now, this article is really interesting because it's about pro-anorexia, uh, pro-eating disorder, um, blogging and online identity. Now we can do a few things here when we're reading. Firstly, code selection at new nodes. And actually what we're doing here is we are talking about the connection between risk and media users, but we can talk about online media users. We might add a description here. We might say, to what extent are the effects of media on eating disorders determined by media users? So this is kind of an interesting thing, I guess, because what we could say here is that um, although there's been a lot of focus on how mainstream media normalize or shame people into uh, being um, unhappy with their bodies, there's actually one of the relatively new phenomenon is the idea that one of the most powerful impacts on people's ideas about their bodies comes through online networks where media users and, and, and women in this case, and particularly young women, um, actually use media to define their own frames of reference around eating disorders. And I might even, I'd be tempted at this point to add an annotation because, because again, um, I would add in a new annotation and I'd say something along the lines of Although much research has been done into how mainstream media affect women's attitudes to their bodies and emerging area of interest is how women affect each 
other through digital media. So a question so a question I might ask is how do women use online media to discuss normal bodies. So again, and then we look at our annotations and you can begin to see, hopefully, how through using the annotation function, what you're doing is quite easily writing your 400 words here. Um, again, here we've got influence of mass media on body image and eating disordered attitudes and behaviors in females, a review of effects and processes. So what we could do is code the selection effects research because it might be worth having a look at some sort of article that summarizes everything we know about media effects research. Um, this is a really good topic. If you look through this, I think one of the things here in this particular article is it represents a different approach to um, understanding effects, which we can think about from a methodological point of view. So if we call this one method, for example, this describes a method of talking to women on campus um, as, um, as a method for understanding how women put together media messages for themselves and how media relate to other sources of, um, of uh, influence over ideas about body, uh, about body image. Now, one of the reasons why this is interesting is because this actually also indicates how you can go about doing research. So, say we were to highlight this, new annotation, I am going to study how women at Monash use media to make sense of their body image. And again, if we go to um, annotation, what you can see is through going through this particular exercise, what you can do is begin to map out each one of the three, or three of the uh, different aspects of the essay. You can begin to categorize ideas in the readings in a way that can contribute to the construction of your essay. And of course, you can highlight the articles that are most important for you to read in the execution of your particular research project. But of course, the really important thing, another important thing here is that what this does is say you decide to um, use four or five different uh, uh, articles in particular. The great thing that this exercise does is it allows you to put that in a broader context. It allows you to briefly reference other research approaches um, to media as a way of explaining what's distinct about yours. So for example, one of the things that we know is that there's a lot of research about the, uh, the way that mainstream media images 
affect the normalization process of women, but I'm more interested in how women put ideas together for themselves, how they, they explain their exposure to media, um, and how they explain how they see the effect that that's had on them. So hopefully what we can see, we're going to be going through these coding steps, coding and annotation steps in class this week. And then the week after that, we are going to be um, moving on to talking about your specific essays, uh, the, the, the more specific readings on this box. Uh, but that's going to be based on the essays that you identify in through the first step. So again, this week, what we're going to be doing is coming to class and we're going to be learning how to write the second section of your essay by using the NVivo coding and annotation function.